What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So, originally, I was going to get everything back on schedule and have my review up Thursday night after Impact. However, due to some personal problems throughout the week and a hell of a week at work, you know, people on vacation, people calling in sick, people quitting, it was, uh, it was a hell of a week. So, as soon as Impact ended, I was completely exhausted, and this was the first chance I got to upload my review, so... Let's get into it. So I thought they put on a decent show this week. Um, basically, the whole reason for the show was to add some more matches to Redemption, and they definitely achieved that. We uh, we only had three matches going into the pay-per-view, being uh, the Exhibition title match, the Knockouts title match, and then the World title match, even though it was changed. Um, so we opened the show with a recap of the events that took place over WrestleCon weekend between Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling. Uh, we got to hear some of the wrestlers' views on things, on how they're changing the landscape of wrestling is really good for the company. We got to hear from Matt Stryker, along with other Impact talent. Um, if there was any thought to bring in Matt Stryker to do commentary, I would definitely be on board with it. I think he does a good job, and uh, his work with Josh Matthews from WrestleCon was, uh, was pretty good. So if it's an option, I'm, I'm all for it. But we open the show with Eli Drake coming out, and before he gets in the ring, Josh tells us that Alberto El Patron was terminated from the company, and that we have a new main event for Redemption. Um, he says Eli is out here to name his tag team partner, because he will be cashing in his briefcase for the tag team titles at Redemption against LAX. So Eli comes out, and he says he was wrong. He said he had no interest in the tag team titles, so he put them on the line for a shot at the world title briefcase. Now he has both cases, and he could be very well be on his way to holding all the gold in impact. At this point, LAX comes out. Conan has interest in who Eli's partner is. Eli says, you know this man very well. He's one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time. All of a sudden, we hear the sirens, and out comes Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. So Scott grabs the mic and says... Three things will happen at Redemption. One, you will lose your titles. Two, you'll get your ass kicked. And three, you'll find out I am the man with the shortest fuse and the largest arms. Conan tells him he doesn't think he has it. He couldn't tear up a chicken at a luau. Um, Eli says the Big Bad Gravy Daddy and the Big Bad Booty Daddy are taking those titles at Redemption. So, I mean, I previously knew about this because... With, it's so hard to go on the internet without everything being spoiled. Like, one thing that's really frustrated me is that I'll go to read an article about an interview with a wrestler, and all of a sudden I'll find out that they're scheduled to be at the pay-per-view in a match, and they talk about it in the article. So it, it's just one of those little pet peeves for me. I guess I just have to stop reading stuff like that if I don't want to be spoiled. But anyway, to this match... Um, I like it, and I kind of hate it at the same time, and the only reason I dislike it is the fact that we know how capable LAX is of putting on a fantastic match, and, you know, you kind of throw in Scott Steiner in there, and you don't know the quality you're getting. I mean, to be fair, the match he was in at the Lucha Underground versus Impact Wrestling show was probably the worst match on the card. Um, Eli, I think he's a very underrated worker, absolutely fantastic on the mic. Um, I wish Impact would grow to its potential so more people can really, or he can be given more opportunities to showcase his talent. Um, but I get why, you know, Impact did it. I'm sure Scott has that drawing power, so the casual fans have something to watch. Um, it, you know, I just hope the match isn't a dud, just for the simple fact that Scott is not who he was years ago. Um, I mean, he was able to move around at the, the show, but not put on a quality match like he could, well, 20 years ago or so. But that's my only gripe with it, and obviously I haven't seen the match yet, so I don't know what to expect. So we go back to the virtual studio, and Josh and Sanjay confirm that the Steiner and Drake versus LAX match will be happening at Redemption. They hype the rest of the show. Matthew says he has to leave to go get ready to face P.D. Williams later on tonight. And we are told the main event for the evening is Rosemary vs. Taya in the Demon's Dance match. Um, at this point, we see the GWN logo on the screen behind them, or behind Sanjay. I think he was by himself at this point. And 
Sanjay says, let's take a look back at Rosemary vs. Jade in the Steel Cage. And that's how we get our GWN flashback. This was beautiful. Um, you had a segue leading into it, a reason to have it. Um, again, my only thing is you didn't keep the logo on during the whole flashback. That was it. But it was different. I liked it. Good job, guys. So up next, we have Sammy Callahan vs. Moose. Um, Sammy comes out first along with the Chris Brothers, and he sends the Chris Brothers to the back. So Sammy's out by himself. We know shenanigans are going to happen. Then Moose comes out. And as Moose comes out, Sanjay's by himself on commentary. And he starts doing the Moose, Moose. And I just start cracking up because it's it's great to see the, the commentary team get into the product, enjoying it and having fun. They don't have this crazy 70-year-old man screaming in their ear, no, no, don't say that, no, no, no. So, just just something different. It's nice to see. Um, obviously, that was a Vince McMahon impression. Um, but this was a decent match. I thought they these two worked well together. So, Moose controlled the, a good portion of the beginning of the match, uh, powerbombing Sammy twice onto the apron. Ashton goes back into the ring. Sammy hits a low blow, distracting the referee. Both, of, both men trade back and forth a handful of near falls. Moose was setting up for victory. Callahan grabbed the bat, hit Moose with it, ends up disqualifying himself. This brings out the Chris brothers. They beat down Moose. Eddie Edwards comes out. They beat him down. At this point, the Chris brothers are holding Eddie down on the ground. Sammy grabs the bat. Alicia comes out. She lays her body on top of Eddie's. And then at this point, Sammy kind of focuses attention on her. So he starts kind of going toward her. All of a sudden, the lights go out. Lights come back on. Tommy Dreamer's in the ring. Kendo stick in hand. Takes out the Chris Brothers. Sammy Callahan. Grabs a microphone and says, Redemption, we're going to have the first ever six-man House of Hardcore match. So it'll be Tommy Dreamer, Moose, and Eddie Edwards versus OVE. Perfect segment to set up another match at Redemption. So that should be a good match. Um, looking forward to that. Great to see... Tommy Dreamer working with Impact. I know he was behind the scenes at the show. We saw him at the Lucha Underground vs. Impact Wrestling show. Impact World Title match was announced at the House of Hardcore show over last weekend. So, another company we're working with. Good stuff. So, up next we have Josh Matthews vs. P.D. Williams. Um, I guess you can say that happened. So before the match, Josh cuts a promo complaining about losing his title to Aries and how he's going to beat Petey Williams. This match was all types of ridiculousness. Uh, it was basically a game of cat and mouse with Matt Seidel kind of trying to get or help out uh, Josh Matthews. Uh, both men teased the Canadian Destroyer, but eventually Matt Seidel ended up hitting Petey Williams, causing the disqualification. Basically, this match happened to put more heat on Seidel, you know. I mean, they really haven't showcased him as not really a bad guy, but, you know, the heel in the situation besides being with Josh Matthews. Um, so I guess they achieved that there. But, yeah. So next we have a Johnny Impact interview. Mackenzie asks him about Jacobs and Congo Kong. They show up. Impact calls Jimmy Jacobs the Kramer, the emo Kramer of the Impact Zone. I got a chuckle out of that. Um... Jacob says that Johnny still doesn't take them seriously, and Kong is going to pop that bubble. Johnny says next week he will be standing in the ring if they want to show up, and then later on in the evening we get confirmation that that match will happen next week. So up next we have the six-man tag match that took place because of the events from last week uh, involving the Cult of Lee and KM versus Falaba, Tyrus, and Richard Justice. Um, yeah. This match happened, basically, so the uh, the heels got, well, the bullies, I should say, got what was coming to them. Uh, the crowd was decently into it. Um, good lower card match. It it, it served its purpose. Uh, Bala ends up, Bog ends up getting the win, hitting the bonsai drop on KM for the win. Hey, okay, uh, Follow Bog got a uh, victory on TV, so that's, that's always good. Um, and that brings us to the main event of Taya Valkyrie versus Rosemary in the Demon's Dance match. This match definitely was worthy of the main event for the evening. Um, I, I, there wasn't really any stipulation. It just seemed like it was a no-disqualification match. Um, 
Match spills outside very quickly. Both women battle up the ramp, so teasing what has happened previously with Taya hitting the road to Valhalla twice on Rosemary on the stage. Um, both of them obviously attempting their finishers on the stage. They end up going back to the ring. Um, Taya picks up Rosemary, drops her on the guardrail. Rosemary's down for a little bit. Taya grabs a bunch of chairs, throws them into the ring. Uh, Taya hits the double knees on Rosemary. She's sitting in the corner with a chair in front of her. Uh, Rosemary hits Taya with a sling blade onto a chair. End up bringing a ladder in. She sets it up in the corner. Rosemary flips Taya onto the ladder in the corner. Uh, table comes out. Rosemary went after Taya in the corner. Taya moves out of the way. Rosemary goes head first into a chair that had been wedged between the two turnbuckles. And then the finish of the match saw Rosemary hit a top rope pile driver through the table. Yes, that was the finish of the match, and it was fantastic. Um, like it, it was, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. These two women put on very good matches, um, and I hope this isn't the end of the feud. I highly doubt it is, or if we're at least going to take a break and then pick it up at another time. Um, but neither of these women have a match at Redemption. Johnny Impact doesn't have a match at Redemption. Brian Cage doesn't have a match at Redemption. So I would assume next week we'll be built, finishing the uh, filling out the card for Redemption because there's still key people without matches. And then at the end of the show, we just get more of a recap about the Lucha Underground versus Impact Wrestling. And we get like the full story behind the firing of Alberto El Patron, which I definitely give props to impact for doing this there's no point in keeping people in the dark it's it shouldn't be a secret it's not kind of got what was coming to him i know he went on did an interview about it being his family and things like that and like i mean it, there's a possibility that was true i'm not saying he was a liar however the fact that you didn't let a company know that that was the reason I mean, I'm pretty sure Impact would be like, all right, if that was the problem, all right, no problem. We'll just build heat on you another way. That That's it. They didn't need to go out and say, you know, um, any no-show. They could have just made up a story or something like that. Actually, they could have just said he no-showed and then built it into an angle. But obviously that wasn't the case. Next week will be the go-home show. Um, I will catch you guys tomorrow for edition of the Impact Report. I have a bunch of stuff going up for that. Some new one-night-only tapings, Twitch specials, teleconference, Ed Nordholm on, talk, uh, no, well, Killing the Town. I got a bunch of things to talk about. So until then, thanks for checking out my video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.